help out the Dr. Wily channel by clicking the sponsor button below. This way you can financially support us and get some cool perks in the process. We all know who Mario is. Even people on the other side of the planet and maybe some aliens in space know who this mustache maniac is. However, for a long time his origins were a bit vague since we only saw him as an adult in his adventures. Luckily enough, we got to see him as a baby in some semi spin off games where Yoshi played a big role. Now, you might think that Mario and his origin played a main stage role in developing the games he was seen in, but that's not really true. He makes his debut in Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. Here, the stork is on his way, delivering baby Mario and baby Luigi to their parents in the Mushroom Kingdom. Kamek, however, has predicted that the Mario Brothers will cause problems for the Koopas in the future, so he attempts to kidnap both of them. He successfully kidnaps baby Luigi and the stork, but baby Mario falls into Yoshi's island and lands on the back of a Yoshi. He brings our young Mushroom Kingdom hero to the others and they decide to help him rescue his brother from Kamek and baby Bowser. And at the end of it all, when they save his brother, both Mario and Luigi are brought back to their parents. Now, like I said, you would imagine that Mario is part of the original concept and the main focus of these games. It's named as a Super Mario title, even with the world subtitle which was a huge hit and the story is centered around our lovely Italian. However, it was actually made with another star in mind, which was revealed during an interview with game journalist Stephen Kent. Here, Shigeru Miyamoto stated that he wanted to make a game starring Yoshi as far back as Super Mario World's development. He disliked previous Yoshi games, specifically mentioning Yoshi's Cookie, Yoshi's Egg and Yoshi's Safari and wanted to make one more authentic to the Yoshi character. An early version of the game was demoed to Nintendo's marketing department, who rejected it due to the visuals lacking punch, in comparison to Donkey Kong Country's pre-rendered 3D graphics. In response, Shigeru Miyamoto developed a more stylized and cartoony art direction for the game, which was accepted. According to Asashi Nogami, the hand-drawn style was created by literally drawing the characters by hand on paper, scanning them and then carefully copying them to make the sprites a pixel at a time. And the Super Mario name in the title? <laughs> that was most likely only there to convince the marketing team as well as the consumers to buy it. This series had an extremely good name after all, the other Yoshi games were nothing like this one, and in terms of gameplay it was similar to the Super Mario style. And so our cartoony hand-drawn heroes were made, however Mario wasn't really the star here. However he did have some amazing abilities and moments in this title that were so different from the normal Mario that you can't even compare them. First of all, he was the victim in this game, and basically helpless a lot of the time. When you are hit, you will float around in a bubble, panicking and crying. So he doesn't really control the situation here. It all comes down to Yoshi saving the day, which is already an interesting twist. However, there's one power-up scene in this game that makes him incredibly useful all of a sudden. Superstar Mario. In this form, he gets a cape and Yoshi turns into a giant Yoshi egg. And after the time runs out, everything turns to normal. While running around, Mario gains insane speed, enough to dash on walls and ceilings, and can use his cape to float down slowly. He's also invincible to enemies, attacks, and even hazards such as spikes and lava, but not bottomless pits. So the only time when Mario does return to his usual behavior is when he gets a star. And just like the normal Super Mario titles, these act as fast-paced, empowering sections for the player. Changing things up a bit to keep enjoyment high, although this can also be a bad thing when it's used too much. However here it's a fun segment that gives us some variety done in a good way. Now after this he was seen in more Yoshi games and kind of became the one and only companion seen in the games along with other heroes in baby form. But the next title, Yoshi Touch and Go, changed things drastically. Like, it's completely different from what it used to be. The game starts off quite similar to the first title, but this time you have to guide baby Mario to the ground, using clouds and trapping enemies in bubbles. When he reaches the ground, a Yoshi is at the bottom, saving him when all his balloons pop where they then pursue Kamek and his toadies to rescue baby Luigi. This time you don't control them really, but actually guide them using clouds. Similar to what was seen in Kirby Canvas Curse later on, and the superstar is still quite similar to what it used to be. But now you can shoot an endless amount of stars at enemies. 
So not a whole lot changed when it comes to Baby Mario, but when it comes to the gameplay, it has a completely different feel and pacing to it. Now from this point onward, the story and stuff seen in these Yoshi games doesn't really change that much. Only in the DS version, we saw a new ability that it gives to the Yoshis, like a dash, as well as causing M blocks to be visible. However, that's about it. Especially the story became extremely linear, and the same over and over and over again. So with his role in the Yoshi games being over in 2014, would this be the end of the younger version of Mario? Well, not really, since he still appeared in a ton of spin-off games like the Mario Kart series. However, I actually want to look at a specific one, which was released before 2014. In 2005, Baby Mario and his brother star alongside the adult versions of them in Mario & Luigi Partners in Time, and in this adventure they team up in order to save the Mushroom Kingdom from the Shroobs. But Baby Mario spends much of the adventure riding Mario piggyback, which is similar to what they did with the Yoshis. And in battle, his attack is jumping on foes, and when he acquires the hammer, he can use them to attack spiked ones. And in piggyback mode, Mario takes all the damage for his baby version, and when he faints, his younger self takes his place. Now they also have some special abilities, like the baby drill, which lets them dig underground underneath obstacles. The baby spin, which allows baby Mario and baby Luigi to access areas that previously could not be accessed with the spin jump. Baby cakes, which enables them to slip through waver thin areas that cannot be accessed using the baby drill, and more. The most interesting part about this game is that you can see both the adult and baby version working together, which kind of breaks the game's lore and messes with it like time travel always does, but it was one of the only times where we saw them with actual character. In the Yoshi games, baby Mario never said, did, or really reacted to anything. But here we get to see more than enough in the cutscenes, which is quite good for this character since it needed some more character development, so you could possibly see how Mario changed from when he was young to what he is now. And to an extent you can notice what their personality was from birth, and how some things changed about them as time went on. So overall Nintendo invested quite a lot of time into them, but in the end didn't do much with it, and only really created it so they could do more with the Yoshis. Even in 2019, they haven't done anything interesting with them for years, while the idea seen in the Mario & Luigi game isn't that bad even. They could certainly do more with that. For example, a game set in the baby or youth era of Mario. This would expand the universe and lore of the series a ton. But of course, like Nintendo always does, they create a character and for some reason completely forget about it and make some $60 new Super Mario Bros. port. But hey, there is always hope. Thanks for watching everybody, I hope you enjoyed. If you want to watch more videos, be sure to click the annotations on the screen right now, and also check out the sponsor button below so you can support the channel.